Me and the homies have been playing fantasy basketball for over a decade now, which is crazy to say aloud. But for the first time in my life, I'm about to do a mock fantasy basketball draft because I refuse to lose again. I think I got two championships. I think I got two championships under my belt. So it's not like I'm out there just losing every single season. But the last time we played wasn't the greatest performance by me. This time, I am taking it seriously. So I found this on ESPN where you could just join a random draft. And I ended up with a 10th overall pick, which is not great. But it's a 12-man league, which is basically what we want in real life. So this will give me a little simulation of what a fantasy draft can look like. Um, I haven't even looked at projections or nothing. I'm going to be honest with you. So, like, I'm going in completely blind. I think our actual fantasy draft is in, like, eight days or so. So, I can play around in a couple mock drafts and figure out who's drafted where and try to put together the perfect team. Let's get into it. There's no rematches or nothing. I get one team, like, in real life. You only get one team. So, even though I don't like the 10th pick, it's what we got to roll with. Um, and 10th pick... This is my first time looking at the big board. Jokic, Giannis, and Luka makes sense. LaMelo being a number four is interesting. Every projection I've seen, people are thinking LaMelo's about to hit that third year jump, which makes sense. But the team around him ain't that great, so I don't really know. 24 points per game, eight assists, and seven rebounds. That's what they're projecting. And if he's averaging that, yeah, give him in the top four. Joel Embiid is there. Okay. And we got the 10th pick, so we're looking at this range. They got Braun here. And you know Braun is always going to be a very good fantasy player. But the last couple years got me scared because he'd been, he been in and out of the lineup and stuff. And I don't know. Last year was a great one. But, again, he dealt with his own little injury. So, um, the 10 range is not a place I would I would want to be. I want to get one of these top three guys. I do. But, obviously, we can't do that unless one of them dudes up top is tripping. What's the, what's the value play? DeMontis Sabonis at 20. I'm adding him to my queue. I will select him in the second round if he's there. They're projecting... Uh, about 19 points, 12 rebounds, 6 assists. I'm going I'm to go up and say 6 assists. And last time him and De'Aaron Fox played together, they were really solid. I think he's going to put up some crazy stats this year. If Sabonis is there at, at 15 and he's projected to go 20, I'm drafting him. Steph Curry is pretty low here. They're projected he's going to average about 25. He gives us about 6 rebounds, 5 assists. Um, the rules have it so that blocks and steals are 4 points. Rebounds are 1 point and assists are 2 points. Made 3 pointers. Is that a thing? Made three-pointers are one point, and you don't get any, pen any penalty for missing three-pointers, but you get a penalty for missing jump shots. Okay, so Steph Curry being that low is surprising, but again, he's not known to give you a crazy amount of rebounds and or assists, but those are still pretty good. I mean, that's low. He's He's been drafted at number six, but on the board, he's 22nd. Who else is low on the board but drafted high? Paul George. He's been drafted pretty high. He's 25th on the big board. Jimmy Butler's been drafted high. I don't really like Jimmy Butler as a fantasy player because I feel like some years or some games every year, he just don't really care about scoring. <laughs> He's a great, great playoff player, but regular season stuff is what I'm looking at. Uh, Zion will be a cool fantasy player to have just to root for him because at the end of the day, when you have a fantasy team, you're rooting for those players. You know what I'm saying? So draft starts at 15 seconds. We'll see who's on the board and uh, all of that. Oh, snap. We got the ESPN sounds. Okay. All right, cool. So that he drafted Steph first. All right, this is a, this is not sim. This is not sim. Nobody in my friend group is drafting Steph Curry first overall in a fantasy basketball. Remember, I want people to remember: if you don't play fantasy, you're not trying to build the team that you think can win a championship in 2K. You're building for production, and drafting Steph Curry first overall is insanity to me. Not first, not over Jokic, Giannis, and Luca, but that just means that there's an extra player that might fall to us. So we'll take that. Uh, next player, Jokic drafted second. Makes sense. You can argue that his production might go down a little bit now that Michael Porter Jr. and um, Jamal Murray are back, but still not a bad pick. I mean, if Jokic was there at two, I'm probably taking Jokic. Wow. I mean, somebody, the fourth overall pick guy is either going to get Luka or Giannis. That's insane. That's that's value right there. That is extreme value. Um, I Cade Cunningham is ranked 17th, been drafted around 23rd or 27th. I can't believe Vucevic is this high. Um, I mean, I would love a bounce back season for Vooch, but I don't, I wouldn't draft him that high. Act, no way I'm drafting him over Sabonis. No way I would draft him over Sabonis, but the big boys say, hey, you should. All right, so Jason Tatum goes fifth. LaMelo is really high here, man. LeBron goes sixth. Oh, snap. I'm going to be honest with you. If Ja or LaMelo's on the board at number 10, I have to take one of them. Trey Young is not bad either, but you can argue that his production is going to go down now that he's got DeJounte Murray. 
but he's still gonna give you a lot of points and a lot of assists so that wouldn't be a bad pick either i mean tyrese is extremely high here um ja got drafted so i might end up with joel i know because this guy's gonna take joel next guy's gonna take Lamelo, 100p so i'm gonna end up with like trey young um or do i believe in a bounce back from dame after his injury or james harden uh you know Kevin Durant gets drafted. So I'm either getting LaMelo or Joel Embiid. That's not too bad. To have the 10th pick and end up in one of those two would be really, really solid as far as fantasy goes. This also is considered a beginner's 12-man head-to-head. -head. I did not realize that. If I would have known that, I, I didn't know there was even options other than... But I just picked the, the guy, the one that was at the top. So I don't know. These people aren't, aren't normally uh, playing fantasy, which is fine. This is the first draft of the year. He took LaMelo. I got to take Joel Embiid. That's that's an easy pick for me. That's an easy pick for me. Even though Trey Young is there on the board, I'm taking Joel. Trey Young is still on the board right now. People are avoiding him. People, are, he's one. I'm one pick away, and Trey Young is still on the board. If you don't draft Trey Young right now, if you don't, if I get Trey Young and jo, and Joel Embiid, it's okay. They took him. Okay. All right. Not too bad. Okay. So I was about to say, um, Demontis Sabonis is still right here. But I do have to have a serious conversation about like having Dane on the comeback. So do I think that Sabonis is gonna last to 30? He's not. 10 seconds, 10 seconds to make this decision. Damian Lillard or Sabonis? As far as fantasy goes, I'm going Demonte Sabonis. As far as fantasy goes, I'm going Demonte Sabonis. I'm a little bit afraid of Damian Lillard coming off that injury. I couldn't go James Harden and Joel Embiid. I couldn't get take two star players on the same roster. And nobody else that was at the top of this list that I feel confident in. So I'm going to go Sabonis. <sighs> Trey Young was there one pick before mine, which is insane. So we sit back and relax. We got pick 34, and it's only on pick 19. So we got a little ways to go. Um, so we can be looking down here. Oh, Alperin Sengun is really high on the boards. Uh, Jalen Brown and Zach Levine. Zach Levine is a guy I would want. I always try to get one homer pick, even if it's not the smartest thing, just because I love my Chicago Bulls. And giving me an extra reason to root for my team is dope. Russell Westbrook is pretty high on here, too. But say what you want about Russ. 17-7-7, uh, seven and seven, pretty good. But you also losing some points because he's going to be missing a lot of shots, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Um, so that's not, that's not great. Um, Jalen Brunson is pretty high up there. He got selected. Paul George gets selected. Anthony Davis is up here at 26. How far is he falling, bro? Anthony Davis used to be like a premier fantasy player, first overall pick type beat. These years, I swear to you, one of these years I won my draft, my fantasy with Anthony Davis as my first pick. And now he's, he got drafted in the third round. Darius Garland is a really good pick. I'm almost, it's almost my pick. And Zion is on the board. Zion's not going to last. One, two, three, four. Zion's not going to last. But, bro, if Zion, if I can snag Zion, who else? Jimmy Butler, again, not a guy I want. But Bam is a dude that I'll be interested in. Um, mostly because Bam out of bio said, hey, I want to take more shots this year. Even though he said that every year, I believe him this year. I really do. Zion did get drafted, and same thing with Bam. Okay, so those guys are gone. Do I believe in that jump from Scotty? This feels really high. Oh, my God, I forgot how much time you have left. Oh, you have time. Um, I know this guy's out. He's out for the four a little bit. This is a draft assess. Shea is a draft assess player. I might lose week one and week two, but Shea is eventually going to come back and he's going to be a stud. So that, that's my guy. That's my guy. I for 30 seconds is not a lot of time, bro. It's really not. Um, Zach Levine is still here. Um, but with some of these other dudes available, I mean, Scotty's not going to last, I don't think. If Scotty is there, I'll take Scotty. I'll take the flyer on Scotty. If flyer on Scotty. I'm avoiding. Kawhi because I don't know how many games he's gonna actually play. Evan Mobley's overall counter stats might not be crazy, but he's gonna get you some blocks and probably a steal plus a game. But I think Scotty Barnes gives you a balance of like everything. So if he's here on next pick, if Scotty don't get drafted right now, we have to take him. He got drafted, bro. Every time I say that, the person gets picked up. So Zach Levine is there. DeAndre Aiden. It's also there. I always try to go big because they're going to give you rebounds and blocks. I'm not look, looking at Zach Levine to give me anything other than points. And everybody else here. Uh, I'll take Jimmy. I know I said out he's a guy I usually avoid. avoid. Um, but he, if he can still give me the two steals 
and the six rebounds, six assists, I'm okay with it. I would rather have Bam. I'd rather have Bam. I those last two picks snuck up on me, for sure. For sure. And I already know the comment section gonna go crazy that I I drafted Sabonis and I didn't draft Trey Young. Whatever, bro. Whatever. I am thinking about fantasy because remember, Shea Gibbs Alexander. As much as he is a bucket, he'll give you five and five and a steal too. As much as Jimmy Butler's maybe not be a bucket, but he'll give you 26 and 6 and a steal. DeMontis Sabonis, 19, 12, and 5, and maybe a steal, maybe a half a block. Like, I'm thinking about fantasy. I'm thinking about guys that'll fill up the stat sheet fantasy wise. That's why I was hoping that we would be able to go one pick and get Scotty Barnes. That's the second time in a row, by the way. The person that I wanted got drafted right before my pick. So that's fun. That's fun. Um, I've just been looking around trying to find the perfect person. And the person that I am going with right now, even though he's not the highest on the board right now, because I refuse to let this player slip between the cracks for me, I am going to go with Ben Simmons. I'm going to go with Ben Simmons, man. He's going to play. I'm pretty sure of it. He's not even rostered full time. I'm drafted Ben Simmons. I'm drafted Ben Simmons. Also got Jalen Green on my board because I think Jalen Green is going to score a bunch of buckets. Unfortunately, he don't really give you a lot else other than the buckets. Uh, but I... I <laughs> I want to root for a young dude, and he's he's like the young dude that has the opportunity to do a lot, all right? CP3 is still here, though, and now I got to figure out if I want him. Jared Allen is still here, though. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Robert Williams is still here, though. Man, I'm going to pick a winner. I, st I don't know. You know what? Reverse it. I think that D'Angelo Russell is going to give us a lot of assists this season. I over Chris Paul though over Chris Paul though over Chris Paul though Chris Paul was washed last time we saw him play Chris Paul was washed last time we saw him play I'm drafting Jalen Green D'Angelo Russell is not a bad pick though I don't think D'Angelo Russell is a bad pick he's not gonna last until our next pick I don't think I'll add him to my queue um, but I think with him and Rudy Gobert because it all they already said that they gonna be running those two players together he gonna get a lot of lobs and stuff I mean, maybe he does end up lasting to pick number 82. He's been drafted around 72, so maybe not. Um, but I'm, I'm just saying he's, he's a guy I'm adding to my list. He got drafted. He got, <laughs> like two picks later, he got, he got drafted. So that's, that's fun. Um, people are like fading Chris Paul, man. I'm, I don't blame him. He's old. And the memory of him is like, what's fresh in everybody's brain is not great. What's fresh in everybody? Oh, he just got drafted. Okay. And yeah, most people have are have left already. <laughs> so we don't we we don't really have time to really think about anything. Everything is happening so fast. I have two really solid players. If I could get both of again, this would be another draft and stash. But if I could get Robert Williams and Wendell Carter, I feel I feel amazing. I feel really good. Again, the cu first couple weeks is gonna be rough with having Shay and Rob on our team. But we got you got to think long term. Think long term. Even though Rob does have his injury history, they're projected he's only going to play 50-something games. Um, so that's something uh, that you should be thinking about. But um, I'm not really thinking about it. Which one do I want to take first, though? Which one do I... F so Rob has been drafted earlier than Wendell. So I'll, I'll take Rob. I'll take Rob now and then Wendell and pick number 87 as long as he stays there. Please still be there. Please still be there. I think I don't think somebody's gonna go all the way down here. Cause again, we in the 70s. Like I and fantasy wise, I'm taking Window Card over Bobby Portis. Love me some Bobby Portis. Shout out to him. Both former Chicago. Franz. You know what? I'm probably gonna stick with Wendell because I feel like he'll he'll stuff the stat sheet a little bit more. Um than Franz will. I don't know. Franz might average 20 this season. No, no cap. Franz might average 20 this season. But again, I do like to go with the big fellas. And technically, Wendell is the big. Uh, because they're going to give you more rebounds and more blocks. So, I'll, ta I'll take them. Franz, you up there though. I, I, if it, oh, RJ Barrett? If RJ Barrett can He's not going to last to that pick. No way. If RJ Barrett can last and I can get this as well? <laughs> uh, I, don't know if my, I don't know if my fantasy team good, real good or real bad. But I'm having fun doing it, bro. People have been drafting Miles Bridges even though he doesn't have an NBA contract. So I'm just, I'm just letting you, just letting you know. Once you get down to the weeds, you see like, oh, this player here, this player is here. RJ Barrett's not gonna last, is he? No, there's no way. We got two autos before us. They're 100% gonna take the highest guy available. Monte Morris in those couple, um, he's only rostered on 
less than 40 percent oh my god um draymond green could be an easy one seven seven and seven would be really solid and then i'm stealing a block i would i'll take draymond this late in the draft i guess yeah rj's off the board okay our boy Jalen Smith is here. I don't even know what to expect from him, but they're saying about 14-9 in a block. Woo! 14-9 in a block would look great. All right, so I will take Dre, but I got to start looking guards. I got too many forwards and bigs, and Draymond can only play utility and power forward, which I hate. Um, And I forgot my pick was going to come up that fast. Okay. Herb doesn't even play the guard position, which sucks. You know what? I'm going to take... I'm going to take Jalen... Jalen Smith here, even though he only plays the 4 2, so I'm kind of pigeonholing myself. Um, can I look for guards real quick? Marcus Smart, Dennis Schroeder, Bones Highland. I got I gotta go best player available in this case because I don't have enough time. I went best player available in Jalen Smith. Um, and now I can start thinking about guards. I think at least two of my last spots have to be a guard, and I have one small four. Sheesh, and it's Jimmy Butler. So no more bigs, no more bigs. We gotta go wings at this point jj reddick is still in the game that's fun that's very fun uh i like looking down here for my last pick and i think it's gonna be ayo desumo he's ranked almost in the 500s and he might start this season um so that's that's that feels like the easy wrap-up pick for the last one and we're in the 11th round out of 13 so we know that we're gonna have ayo who plays a shooter guard in one i also have karis levert um i think karis levert is a bench player if he's averaging this i will take that um, and he can run some small four because I'm looking at the small, the small people that can run the small four position. I mean, it's not a lot of fantasy basketball wise. Tari Easton is strictly small four. That's that's interesting. Um, yeah, it's not a lot. I mean, we just talking about filling the stat sheet. Cam Johnson will hit you some threes. I am going to take Karis LeVert here. Um, as I continue to look for another guy. Point guards, we have two. And then Ayo will be a third. Um, so let's let's go look at point guards one last time. Lonzo's gonna be out for X amount of time, so you don't want to draft that. Markel Fultz. Take a flyer on Markel and end with Ayo DeSumo. Markel filled the stat sheet last year in the minutes that he was given. Um, okay, that's not a good representation. Here we go. Look at this. 19, 7, and 3, 12, 5, and 7, 11, 3, and 6. Like, he did a lot. And fantasy point-wise, the way he ended the season, that's a steal of a pick at the 12th pick. And then lastly, I think, I'm like I said, I'm taking Ayo DeSumo, who also, at the end of the year, was playing pretty good, uh, especially, I mean, that last game, he gave us a lot. Uh, he also has seven turnovers, which is not ideal. But the Bulls don't really have a lot of point guard play now. So that'll be the end of my draft. Um, I will rate it like a 6. For my first one, I would rate it like a six. Now, it won't be this fast in real life because I won't have, majority of the league right now have left. That's what these auto means. In real life, people will be taking a full 30 seconds so I can really think about my picks a little bit more. So I think I will make better decisions instead of like panic picking. I mean, I think we give our, do we give ourselves a minute per pick so I will have a little bit more time to think things through? Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna take Io on this last pick and then we gonna wrap it up. And Ayo will be that last pick. Thank you very much. Um, so this is this is what our team looked like in the mock. Joel, DeMontis Sabonis, Shea, who's basically a reserve with Robert Williams. Those two players are reserves. Jimmy Butler, Ben Simmons. We we do have an okay amount of in injury question marks. Now that I'm looking at it. Joel Embiid, even though he's been healthy the last couple of seasons, injury question mark. We know this man is missing games. We know this man is going to miss games because he's out right now. Ben Simmons got some chances, I guess. But the way he's talking, I don't think he's going to be injured at all this season. Um, but that black, that back could flare up a little bit. Even Draymond Green missed some time last season. Wendell Carter is a guy that get nicked, nicked up a little bit. Marco Fultz. And I just draft the most injury-prone team in, in the history of fantasy sports. Maybe. I don't know. 